now available in e-readers everywhere why 70% of black women are single. Learn the real reasons why 70% of black women are single in this e-book which breaks down all the reasons why black women just can't get a man. Why 70% of black women are single is now available in e-readers everywhere. In the aftermath of the murder that Stephen Stevens participated in and his suicide, one of these black females uh, who was a part of the YouTube fascist group decided she was going to make a video talking about how black women needed to divest from Blackistan and how black women needed to leave Blackistan and leave the black males to pretty much destroy the community that they lived in. And I listened to that whole argument and it makes no logical sense. Now, when we think about this whole concept of a quote-unquote Blackistan, it is what we, many people call the black community. And I looked at this whole concept of a ghetto way back in the 1990s when I was writing my first novel, The Changing Soul, and I understood that the ghetto is not a physical place, it is a psychological place. And with the black female being the teacher of culture, she is the one who pretty much created the culture of the so-called ghetto during the feminist movement of the 1960s when she embraced white feminism and when she embraced the whole concept of the white liberal welfare state. This modern day ghetto or blackistan that this black females call it is a concept and a construct she created when she embraced that feminist concept and that fe and those white liberal welfare policies. So how can you escape something that you pretty much embraced and helped create? So when we look at this whole idea of leaving the Blackistan to go to a white neighborhood, a Hispanic neighborhood, an Asian neighborhood, or an Indian neighborhood, it's pretty ridiculous because when we think about it, everywhere this black woman will go will turn eventually into a Blackistan. And the reason why it's going to turn into a Blackistan is because whenever she goes out and has children with those white men, those Hispanic men, those Asian men, those Indian men, or those Arab men, what's going to happen is she's going to teach the same ghetto culture to her children, and her children are eventually going to turn that neighborhood into the same Blackistan that she turned the black community into. And that's why she cannot escape Blackistan, because Blackistan is inside of her mind it is inside of her values. And this is why David Carroll pretty much was right when he said that Blackistan emanates from that atomic waste reactor from between her legs because what comes out of her head goes and comes out of her body because that's why we have Blackistans and that's why we will have Blackistans wherever this black female goes because when there is a group of them, they will teach that culture to their children they will teach those values to her children, and then her children will act just as dysfunctional as these Negroes in many of these neighborhoods. This is why I said in the previous video, Spellbound Serena Williams, that any biracial child that she were to have would be just as dysfunctional as any of these Negroes out here because the culture they have learned from her is what's leading to her or children becoming dysfunctional. And this is why the child will be completely messed up because she's messed up. When it comes down to her mind, it's one of the most screwed up places on the earth. And any guy who thinks that moving this black woman from her neighborhood to another one will change her, no. All it's going to do is lead to that neighborhood turning into another Blackistan. And there are historical um, documents to pretty much prove this. Now, back in the 1970s, when the integration was going on, there were plans to integrate some schools in Massachusetts. And they, took to the, they went out and bust these black kids from this black school district into this white school district. And what happened was, many of the white people went out and protested and marched and they got angry. And when they saw themselves losing in court, what happened was the white people decided, since they were the ones with the money, they decided to pack up and move out of those school districts and take their children 
to another school district. And in the aftermath of moving those white children out of that school district that had to be integrated by law, what happened was those schools became predominantly black. And those neighborhoods became predominantly black. And guess what happened to those neighborhoods? Those neighborhoods turned into Blackistans. So we look at this whole Blackistan concept, and it clearly shows us that no matter where these Negroes go, it eventually turns into a Blackistan. And the reason why it turns into a Blackistan has to do with the culture many of these Afro-American Negroes are raised in. Any, many of these Afro-American Negroes, wherever they go, pretty much turns into a Blackistan because of this white feminist culture and these white liberal welfare policies and the culture that creates the ghetto mindset. As long as they have that ghetto mindset, it doesn't matter where many of these Negroes will go, they will pretty much turn it into a wasteland. Many of these males were raised by these single mothers are just dysfunctional because of the values they are taught. And I can think of another example I heard from another YouTuber a long time ago who talked about how there were plans to integrate another middle-class neighborhood and turn it into something where the blacks were in and the poor people were in, mixing in with the rich people. And what happened in that case, again, was the same thing that happened up in Massachusetts when they tried to integrate the schools. The rich people who had money and resources left, and the neighborhood turned into a Blackistan. The same thing is happening in Atlanta right now, where Atlanta, which was a home for middle-class black people who were trying to do something with their lives, then brought these dysfunctional Negroes down there, and we have yet another Blackistan. So how can you escape something that everywhere this female goes pretty much turns into it? And the reason why these neighborhoods are turning into Blackistans pretty much has to do with the culture, values, and ideas that many of these black females have from the feminist movement and the welfare state she came from. So every neighborhood she goes to will turn into a Blackistan because it doesn't matter where she goes, the problem has to do with this female's thinking, these female's values, and this female's culture. She thinks she can escape Blackistan, but the only way she could probably ever escape Blackistan is if she went to see a psychotherapist to deal with many of the mental health issues that she pretty much has that are preventing her from growing as a person. And when you look at this Negro female, she says she wants to escape something that she created, and that's the big problem. She's the one who created Blackistan, and she doesn't want to take responsibility for the Blackistan that she created in these get urban centers that have turned them into crime-infested, drug-infested, and places with crumbling schools and run with dysfunctional churches, Arab-owned stores, and fast food joints on every corner. That environment was created by her, and it was created by her embracing white feminism and white liberal welfare policies. And she refuses to acknowledge her part in the creation of this Blackistan, and she refuses to take responsibility for helping clean it up. Because many of these dysfunctional Negroes are the product of her poor values, of her irresponsible behavior, and her inability to do what she said she could do, raise a boy to become a man. Because what's terrorizing Blackistan are most of these Negro males that she raised, that she said she could, that could become men. And some of these single mothers will sit there and say, oh, the Steve Stevens, you know, was the, supposed to be the apex of it. But again, your Steven Stevens is the textbook case for these dysfunctional males. Even though this man had a college degree and a good job, he was just as dysfunctional as your thug on the street because he was an ultra-emotional, melodramatic, effeminate Negro who had no conflict skills, no critical thinking skills, and no reasoning skills because he had no father in his life. And because he had low self-esteem, he went out and chose the same codependent mother that he had a relationship with for a girlfriend, a single mother who had seven children. And he sat there and thought that this was a healthy relationship when all he was was moving from one codependent relationship to the next. 
And then you'll have these black females sitting there talking about how Stephen Stevens is an example of why they need to leave Blackistan, when all you did was, or going to do, is create more Blackistans, no matter wherever you go. And this is why many white, Hispanic, Asian, Indian, Arab people don't want to live around Negroes, because everywhere they go, they pretty much turn their neighborhoods into Blackistan. And this is why many people who are in politics pretty much don't want to have Negroes in their neighborhoods. And many create policies to try to contain the Negro, except for these liberals of today who want to talk about this so-called gentrification where they move back to these cities. The reason why many of the, of the people of old in the 30, 40 years ago moved away from the Negro had to do with getting away from these urban centers which were going to be turned into Blackistans and places where there is rioting, where there is crime, where there is drugs, due to the values that many of these Negroes were raised with. And they don't want their neighborhoods to be turned into that type of wasteland. So they decided to pack up and move so they could have a better quality of life. Because you can't have a quality of life in a neighborhood filled with these dysfunctional savages. These savages will pretty much destroy everything that is around them and then try to attack anyone who has any sort of economic or financial resources. Many of the grandsons, like these hipsters, don't understand this and they don't understand what their grandfathers and fathers were doing in these urban centers by trying to contain your Blackistan to a small number of blocks where there wouldn't be any of these, where everything would be contained. So they wanted to contain it, but today's politicians and today's liberals, they want to kind of spread this out, not understanding that when you have a Blackistan, what's going to happen is when you bring the Negro out of his community and he does not have the right values, he's going to destroy your community. He's going to terrorize your community. And we can see this going on in many areas where the Negroes and many others have come like your Long Island right now, which is being pretty much terrorized by gangs, and many other parts of the areas where people thought they could integrate many of these Negroes into their neighborhoods, and all they're doing is terrorizing those communities as we speak. And this is why people don't want to deal with the Negro pretty much because of individuals like this who come to your neighborhoods, terrorize them, commit crimes, and wreak havoc. And the reason why they are wreaking havoc has to do with this black female who pretty much says she wants to escape Blackistan, but everywhere she goes will eventually be turned into a Blackistan due to the culture, values, and ideas she has learned from white feminist and white liberal welfare policy, creating that culture in her mind that pretty much it creates a ghetto mindset that pretty much brings down the quality of life wherever she goes. Again, this is why... People want to contain the Negro female to their neighborhoods because if she leaves the neighborhood, she's going to spread her culture, values, and ideas to other neighborhoods and bring down the quality of life there. And this is something many people don't want to happen because they saw what happened in Massachusetts when they integrated those public schools. They saw what happened what in in many of these neighborhoods when they try to bring people in through 80-20. And they see what happens when you try to do things like this. And it's sad because you have many hard, working class, decent black people who suffer because of these types of dysfunctional individuals. And these dysfunctional individuals make it hard for those working class brothers and sisters to move out of the neighborhoods that they grew up in and live a better quality of life. because. These females who want to escape Blackistan don't want to take responsibility for Blackistan. And if they took responsibility for Blackistan, they could create a community that is the equal of any of the communities they call themselves running to. Because Blackistan was not Blackistan many years ago. Before the feminist movement, many communities like Harlem, many communities like Sugar Hill, they were thriving neighborhoods where working class people pretty much created communities with their families. And these communities pretty much 
raised children who became educated, responsible, conscientious people. It wasn't until black females decided they wanted to embrace the policies of white feminism and become strong, independent black women and join the white liberal welfare state that these communities started to fall apart. And these communities started to fall apart because these policies told women that the father couldn't be in the home so they could get welfare benefits. And these women pretty much believed this whole false ideology that these white feminists told them that they could raise boys to become men and girls to become women. And in the aftermath of them embracing these policies, what happened was these children who grew up eventually grew up to become the Negro children of the corn. And these Negro children of the corn pretty much stalked the streets, terrorizing everyone, including the black females who created these children. And now, like the children of the corn, these females are terrorizing everyone and wreaking havoc. And the females, the older females, who are pretty much my age, see what they have created and instead of taking responsibility for it, what they want to do is go and be like Snake Plissken and escape from Blackistan. Unfortunately, they can't escape from Blackistan because Blackistan is a place inside their head. And they're thinking, because they are spellbound, they're going to go to some white community and live out the rest of their days there. Unfortunately, what they don't understand is most white folks don't want you in their communities. Most Hispanic folks don't want you in their communities. Most Asian folks don't want you in their communities. Most Arab folks don't want you in their communities because they know when you come to their community, eventually you are going to bring Pookie, Ray Ray, Bobby, Shinebaum, John Tavius, and they're going to bring Blackistan to their communities when they visit, and they're going to turn their community into a Blackistan. So when we look at this whole is this whole Blackistan concept and black women talking about they want to leave, no, they can't leave because everywhere they go is Blackistan because Blackistan is not a physical place, it is a psychological place. And until this black female goes out and gets psychological counseling, every community she goes to will eventually turn into a Blackistan. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.